friends, it is Sarah the Itty Bitty Celtic Witch, and today we are here to dive into some waxing moon magic. So waxing moon magic and witchcraft is part of our moon witchcraft series. We've also been exploring the energy of the new moon, of the full moon, and of the waning moon in your spiritual practice. So if you'd like to learn more about those moon phases and about celebrating those esbats, you can check out the playlist, the moon witchcraft playlist down below. Now let's take a look at some waxing moon witchcraft. So what is the waxing moon. The waxing moon arrives between the new moon and the full moon. When the waxing moon arrives, there is a crescent of light illuminated by the sun. This crescent keeps growing brighter and brighter until the full moon. So the waxing moon is that period, that phase between the new moon all the way up to the full moon. In keeping with what the waxing moon is, that growing crescent of light that grows ever brighter and more illuminated until the full moon, in magical practice, in correspondences, in witchcraft practice, the waxing moon is generally seen as a period of time of growth and of building things. It's when those new inspirations, those new beginnings, which took sprout and began to be imagined at the energy of the new moon or dark moon, these are now, during the waxing moon phase, beginning to grow, really root in the ground to take some green witch analogy and grow stronger. It's when those seedlings are shooting or forth from the earth and we can really see the leaves starting to stretch or the plants starting to grow. So in a green witch context, it would be that period of growth where the ideas, the seed has sprouted out from the earth and is now beginning to gain some foliage and really grow strong and root in the earth. So the waxing moon then is a perfect time to work with this energy of growth, this energy of building. It's a bit of a hustle as well. It can be a really good time to devote your energy to magical projects, to spell crafting, to rituals, and really spend some time enjoying the quick speed of things, of really building things and focusing, and that wonderful side of the hustle. A lot of the time the hustle is seen as being very energetic, and overwhelming and sometimes we spend a bit too much time in that hustle mindset but working with the waxing moon energy can be a good way to embrace the benefits of the hustle in getting things done and really devoting some time to your spell crafting and allowing those spells to flourish so the hustle has its benefits too and during the waxing moon this is definitely something that we can work with so how do you then approach working with this energy of the waxing moon and weaving all of this passion passion and magical energy of growth into your practice. There's a few different ways you can work with the waxing moon energy. One is by really going outside and soaking in some moonlight. If you're able to go outside and appreciate some of that waxing moon crescent light, that can be a really good way to charge your own energy with that lunar aspect. If you are indoors, you can also head to a window that you can see the waxing moon from. But of course, not everybody's home has a window that faces the waxing moon year round. So instead, as an alternative, you can also simply place some imagery of the waxing moon on an altar, on a sacred space, somewhere where you are frequently. It doesn't necessarily have to be on an altar. It can be somewhere where you are all the time, perhaps on a desk. That way you're, it's very much at the forefront of what you're working with and you can continue to draw on that energy throughout your everyday part of your life and infuse a little touch of magic here and there with some lunar energy as well. So while definitely I would recommend soaking up some of that lunar light outside if you can or by a window, if you can't then it is absolutely okay to work with the energy of the waxing moon through imagery. As well as this, you don't necessarily have to see the waxing moon, such as out through a window, to soak up its energy. It is still there up in the sky doing its thing and sharing that lunar energy with us. So if you are weaving spells of growth around this time, you can place them up by a windowsill even if it's not facing the waxing moon and still soak up that energy of growth and that passion and that building hustle energy and infuse this into your spell. 
So now that you've decided how you want to work with this energy of the waxing moon, whether by a windowsill, whether outdoors, or simply engaging with the energy and in soaking it up right where you are, now it's time to have a think about what sort of spells you want to cast in the waxing moon. So here are a few different everyday spell casting ideas to focus on during the waxing moon phase. Of course, if something else is inspiring you, as always go with this. It's most important to always listen to your intuition and let spirit be your guide. A few tips though for some inspiration for the waxing moon are spells around growth. This seems rather fitting as we've talked a lot about growth here. If it's the springtime where you are, this can also lend a lot of lunar energy to those seedlings that are growing in your garden, in your indoor garden. So spells around growth are really good to cast around this time. As well as this, with all that energy of growth and hustle and busyness, energizing spells are really good to work with right now because you're spending a lot of energy, you're focusing your attention, and you're really getting things done. So spells that will add a little extra pop of energy or boost of energy to your day, to the activities you're focused on, to the spiritual practices that you are devoting your time to, this is another good time to cast those spells for that extra little oomph of energy. So with all of this energy that's hanging around, this growth, this building, this action and this passion. Another type of spell that can be really fitting right now during the waxing moon is focus or clarity spells. Working with the energy of focus will help you make the most of all of this energy that you have and really focus it on projects, on spell crafting, on rituals that are most aligned for you in this moment. So working with correspondences that are linked with clarity and focus can also be really fitting for the waxing moon phase. Phase. Accompanying this energy of focus and clarity, this can be a good time to plan as well. As things are growing and building and developing in your spiritual practice and your spell crafting, spending some time planning out how you want to infuse your everyday life with little bits of magic can be really nurtured by the waxing moon energy as well and parts of your daily life as well, spending some time planning and seeing where you can focus that attention and focus that magical energy best. If you enjoy tarot reading, intuitive readings, oracle readings, this during the waxing moon is a really good time to focus on spreads around growth. It can add that extra layer of insight into where to focus your energy or your spell crafting and also help you connect with what's most aligned for spirit in this busy hustling phase. So tarot readings can be a really good way to continue to draw on the energy of the waxing moon as well and include and incorporate that aspect of growth into your tarot practice. With all of this energy of building and growth, this is also a good time to set up an altar space. Now it's always a good time to set up an altar space or really cast any of these spells. It's simply that during the waxing moon, if you're wanting to add some of that lunar energy and work along it, then the waxing moon can lend that growth aspect to your altar. Or if you're focusing on spells that are really needing energy to manifest and focus and clarity and get things done, then this is a good time to perhaps charge those on your altar space. For a dash of green witchcraft in everyday witchy things, you can tend to your plants. They need water, they need care. During the waxing moon, really focus on the energy of their growth. If it's springtime, as I mentioned earlier, then this is a good time to work with those seedlings shooting up through the earth. But if it's not, you can work with the plants that are around you, seeing how their leaves are doing, if they're getting enough water, if they're getting too much water, if they're getting enough sunlight, if they're getting not enough sunlight. Essentially just check in with the growth of the plants, of the green beings that are part of your home, that are part of your green family as well. And then for a dash of kitchen witchery, you could spend some time writing recipes and magical recipes, seeing different spells that you want to cast in the kitchen, and planning out some time to add those into your everyday witchcraft routine so that you have that sort of magical energy to draw on in the kitchen as we move through the rest of the lunar cycle. So that's a quick look at what the waxing moon is and how to work with it in your witchcraft 
witchcraft practice. I would love to hear how you work with the waxing moon in your spiritual practice. Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please do hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to join me for monthly tarot readings for new moon dancer tarot readings, then check out the Patreon link below. Wishing you a most wonderful waxing moon phase and so very many blessings.